Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third on the back deck of the Rod and Reel Junior. Got my old buddy from Moulton Barrow, New Hampshire, Jim Gray here standing with a net, ready to do this. These guys have been fishing with us for a hundred years. Dave Crawford trained half the people that run polygraphs in the United States. He's got this king on right here. And Cam Hasner looking over the action right here. This guy smoked on the middle and what we've got him on is a lighted flasher. Let's take a look at this bait right here. Here's our world famous Chiquita fly that's been annihilating so many kings here on Lake Ontario. And a uh, lighted flasher, this cream sickle, this is what we call the Johnny Special in the safe charter fleet and you can see the light in it. Forward to the left, when this fish, when this plate goes in the water and the contacts hit the water, it strobes an LED light. Push it all the way forward and wheel to the left. Got a big fish on here, okay, neutral. Turn sideways in the chair so that you can look out the back. What we're trying to do is put the transom of this fish, or transom of the boat right at this fish. I'm not gaining anything. You're, you're okay. Okay. Yeah, you're getting them back. You got a lot okay. more line on oh, there I than know. you did. Man, he was going. He had the old captain in full boat panic mode. But now we got some line back, and he's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are the words of the old Indian guide. <laughs> Black forward. <laughs> Perfect, just like that. We'll come back on this as we get a little closer here. Well, we're having some great action on these kings here on Lake Ontario today. We're catching a lot in the trend. The temperature's pushed way down, so we're really relying on the Pro-Troll lighted flasher to do the job for us. This has saved our bacon a lot of times in the safe charter fleet because we can drop this down in the dirt, especially when the thermocline's down there within 5 or 10 feet of bottom. Stir those kings up, activate them, they get up off the bottom. A lot of times they'll hit spoon presentations or they'll hit smaller flasher fly uh, combinations that are trolled um, slightly behind that. Um, what are we running today? We want a little meat in the water because we want some scent and we want this to activate those fish. So we're using uh, Rice Davis head here. This one's glow orange, it's got the black ladder back and you'll notice that uh, I've got it tournament rigged. I'm snelled on a number one at the bottom just like I normally do and then of course I've got a, an octopus in line just above it. So when you're setting that bait up, you want to make sure that the tip of that bait lays right in the belly of that back treble hook just like that now what we're going to do is we're going to tie a bait head and we're going to show everybody exactly what we do um, here's the deal fluorocarbon you've heard me preach fluorocarbon so much but when i'm running meat rigs i don't want those things to come undone i don't want them to break the best way i know how to do that is 50 pound test trialing big game we've been running this stuff since we were kids and it's absolutely Phenomenal. So I'm going to take you step by step through how we set up this rig. Everybody knows that we're 41 inches behind on our uh, on our meat rigs from the back of the hook to where we attach to the to the flasher. So I'm going to put my 50 pound test in, and I'm going to snell this just by simply wrapping the line down the shank of the hook. Once we get that in position. We're going to take the end of that. Make sure you cut plenty of 50 pound test leader, way more than the 41 inches that you need, because you can always cut it down, but you can't add it on if you make it too short. So there's the back hook, just like that. Simple. We've got it put together, and that's on, and that's in position. So once it's in position, we're going to simply take our octopus. We're going to grab that hook. We're going to thread it on up through that eyelet and we're going to slide that octopus hook all the way down until it's just about an inch or so in front of the treble just in that fashion right there we're going to pinch that line on we're going to wrap it around the eyelet we're going to go let's get it to, we're going to wrap that thing around there about eight or ten times we're going to make sure that a good section of that uh hook shank is covered by wraps in the line that'll help it troll straight then we're going to take the end of the end of the fishing line again and we're going to come back up through the eyelet just like that now watch what happens no knot 
It's just snelled. It snugs down. Just kill that cam for me if you would. It just snugs down and there you've got a tournament rig. It's all snelled and it's, it's ready to go in position. So now once it's in position, we're going to take through the back end, through the back end of the bait head, there's this little hole. We're going to drop that line right in. And then sometimes you fish around a little bit with this, but there's a hole that's located right here in the top of the bait head. So we turn it upside down like this. We try to get that line to come out See that hole. 50 pound test has come out that hole in the bottom of it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to string, string that all the way down. And once we get this in position, the critical part to making this whole thing work right is a toothpick. And it's not any toothpick. Don't get round toothpicks, get square toothpicks because they're going to hold in position. Round toothpicks, your hooks are going to slide. So once we're in position, like this, we drive the toothpick into the end of the bait head, push it in as hard as we can get it in, and once it's there, we simply break it off and twist it. Now those hooks are in position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure along the back of the boat Here's the belly of the hook, and you'll see that I'm coming right here to my 41 inch line. So everything's exact. When we're working from boat to boat in the safe charter fleet, we want to make sure that everybody is trolling exactly the same thing. We call it standardization, and uh, it's kind of uh, critical because we want to make sure that everything is done exactly the same. So we're going to cut this. We're going to cut this line this right here okay now we've got our 41 inch uh, bait head now this is set up how do we go about pinning the actual meat in place well what we're using is Michigan stinger ballyhoo uh, bait this stuff is fantastic uh, it's pre-cut it's the right size where you don't have to fight with it to get it in the head what we do is we put that leading edge in and we force it look what I'm doing with my fingers here I'm balling that up and I'm driving that piece of meat into the head I call that front end loading the bait head I push as much into the front part of that bait head as I can because I want it weight forward in the head then I drive my toothpick through once my toothpick uh, is in position, I'll take my dikes or my pliers and I'll cut that toothpick off. And now that bait is lying in the bait head. And it just so happens that this one is exactly in the right position. If it's not, you can pull a little bit of line out, bring a little bit of line in until it's setting right in the belly of that hook. Now here's what's critical. Here's the most important part to rigging bait, and this is what nobody talks about. I'm going to dedicate this segment um, to Captain Paul Baldwin. He just passed away here the last in the last two weeks, but he was the grandmaster of running bait on Lake Ontario. And uh, when uh, bait harnesses first came to Lake Ontario, he was the one that really spent the time figuring out how to do them. He worked with the guys from the West Coast, and they really brought those techniques to Lake Ontario. What we want to do, if you were to put this bait in the water in the position that it's in, you'll catch fish. But here's what that bait, here's what that bait's going to do. It's going to have this kind of an action as it's rolling behind that flasher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the bend that we use to accentuate that roll, make it a dominant, aggressive roll so those kings come in and attack it. I'm going to work with the last half inch of this bait harness and I'm going to pinch it with my thumb and I'm going to bend it just about 90 degrees. See that? That's how that's going to go. Then I'm going to put the flat of my thumb in this position and I'm going to bend the whole head so that that's the shape that that head's in. Now, as that bait lies in there and you put this bait in the water, you got your lighted flasher that's whipping this but because it's front and front weighted it's front end loaded and more weight is up here in the nose of that and you've got that aggressive bend now as that sweeps and it circles it makes this kind of motion it's faster 
from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock than the roll is from 6 o'clock to 12. So it's an aggressive motion like this behind the flasher. If you're a veteran angler of king salmon fishing on Lake Ontario and you remember the days gone by where we used loco spoons to crush kings on Lake Ontario, that same kind of hucking action, the same action that we get out of an NK28 when you bust it above 2.6 knots, that's what you get. That is that aggressive roll and kick that those kings want. When you get that bait head doing this, you're gonna start catching fish three to one over the guys that are not tuning it in that fashion. Once again, that's the way the tune looks. Adjust it, it can be steeper, it can be less. Put it in the water, watch the roll till you get that aggressive kick out of your bait harness, and then drop that 41 inches behind the lighted flasher. It's always a pleasure when something works out on Lake Ontario and you get to use not only uh, a, a couple of the manufacturer's products that you work with on a regular basis, uh, the Advanced Tackle, the Michigan Stinger Bait, which the cut on this is absolutely perfect. We annihilated the Kings on it today. And you get to use uh, Dick Pool's Pro Troll E-Chip Flashers, especially with this light. You put that in the water and it makes contacts and then all of a sudden you got strobing LEDs on dark days or in dirty water and it just catches kings when nothing else works. I'm Bill Safe the Third. Let's go back to the action and we'll finish this king off. That's on our just back. throwing the tail of the boat right at this king. Perfect. Forward Chris. Wheel to the left just a bit. Be ready on him, Cam. Wheel to the left, Chris, this way. Okay, easy. Easy, I'm gonna come right over the top of you right. here. Okay, right. wind down to him, Dave. Wind down to that flasher. Neutral! Okay, raise your rod tip. Raise your rod, raise your rod. Back up, back up in the boat. Back up in the yep. boat, turn his head. Back up, come on. Yep. Get him, yep. Cam. Got him. Nice. Okay, hold right there. Let's get this guy in. Perfect, King. Perfect cam. Hold them right there, Cam. Here's that silver lighted flasher. This thing's been dynamite. If it hasn't gone one time today, it's gone at least ten times. Big Dave, what do you think? Love it. Love it. Every year. The best. That is the best. That is awesome. Look at this. In the corner, we're gonna show you the tournament rigging on that fish. There's the bait head, there's the bait. You can see the the silver. You can see the silver octopus right there, and the trebles all the way down in the gill raker. Absolutely hanging that king on a meat hook. Let's get him out and we'll show him to you. There's that old meat head right in the corner of that king. Let's take a look at this big guy. Staging for sure, getting into that fall staging colors. Beautiful, beautiful king, Dave Crawford. Nice job on the rod, that was perfect. He got out about 460 feet. <laughs> I he know. was going. I we were know. afraid he was going all the way. <laughs> I was. <laughs> and there's uh, that lighted flasher. Cam Hazard's hold right here. That's the ticket. That's the combination that's working so good on Lake Ontario. And that is the way it's working with the Safe Charter Fleet. Uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed the tips that we shared with you today on rigging meat to go behind these lighted flashers. Uh, if you haven't got Pro Troll lighted flashers, you need to add them into your arsenal. There's a bunch of times when they are just bulletproof and they're going to provide that extra attraction that you need to really get the kings going on certain days. And remember, keep those bait heads at 41 inches. Concentrate on the tune that we showed you in today's uh, tip and uh, put a few more kings in the boat this year on Lake Ontario or whatever great lake body of water you're working.